Yes, sir. All right, let's get the show on a row. We have a really fun show today. I'm excited. Good friend on the show as well. Uh, hey, everybody. It's Andy. I would say Andy, a.k.a. producer BTW on Twitter. But guess what? I don't have that Twitter anymore. Unfortunately, right now, my Twitter is love retro BTW for the time being until Twitter gets their stuff together because they striked me with DMCA strikes from two years ago. But exciting that I could bring you a guest today and a good friend of mine uh, from my days in the crypto space. We have Crypto Stash. That's right. He really has a mustache, as you see below. What's up, Stash? Thanks for joining today, man. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Uh, so, Stash, I know. So it's really interesting and we'll get into it a little bit, but there's a few things I want to ask you before we get into NFTs. And I know if you see the title of the show today, we're talking about video game NFTs and we're going to go into a little bit of that a little deeper. But right off the top, Stash, I want to know what is your relationship with video games? What kind of memories do you have of retro video games? from your past before, because this is a retro video game podcast, I'd love to learn a little bit more about your personal video game history and your relationship with games. Yeah. I mean, uh, I've been a gamer since I was five, six years old, man. You know, uh, gr grow, grew up playing, you know, Atari 2600. And then I, you know, really like, and, and you know, the funny thing is too, my, my real vivid memories aren't of, of playing Atari really when I was, it was really when I first got my first NES that, you know, when it first came out, that was like, that's how that had the biggest impact. I felt, you know, did you get uh, the yeah, I mean, NES like back in the eighties, like back in the day when you were younger and stuff like that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. When it came out 85, I think it, was I think 85, it came out 85, 85 right. Yeah. I think I got an 86 because I was too poor to get it right when it came out. So right. it had to be one of those things that like, it was the big Christmas gift or whatever, you know? And, uh, yeah, man. I mean, and then I was hooked at, on that. And, and so that, that really started, uh, my, you know, love for video games and, you know, definitely played uh, a lot of console games, still, still played Atari and stuff at that time too, uh, as I grew up, but, uh, then got into computers and started doing early computer gaming. And that's kind of where, you know, and, and that, that was, and that, you know, kind of drew me in that direction too. But, you know, I've played pretty much all the, you know, retro consoles now the funny thing is man is it really i stopped playing on consoles after playstation one really i really did so you went so, you went full on pc after that is what you're saying yeah i mean i I've, i was always a pc gamer but like you know i and always i would always buy the nintendo system so i i would always have a nintendo whichever was the latest one out so like i'm assuming you, know, you have all, a switch right now I yeah got, yeah for yeah. sure so so yeah so i have that's the only console i have uh, at the moment, I don't do PlayStation or Xbox stuff. I, I do PC gaming and then I'll do, you know, console. And that's mostly like family stuff. And then one of my favorite ones was the Wii. You know, I loved when the Wii came out, man. I used to do a lot of fun stuff with that. I used to run like Wii events uh, in my city where we play like Wii on these giant big screens inside of bars or like uh, nightclubs and drinking and stuff. And then keep on going on back, you know, and it's like you have all the systems and stuff, uh, you know, before that, uh, which were, were, were have always been really amazing. And so, you know, it just, yeah. So, so going from the, from Atari to the NES and then, you know, getting to obviously Super Nintendo, a lot of great titles there. Uh, and then you have like your Sega, you know, that, that was in the mix there too. And, you know, so I think that that, that was really fun to get into explore the, you know, that world and having competition for, for really for what was going on with, with the Nintendo and what, you know, they were doing with Mario as their flagship guy. And then now they're Sonic and they're just like, <laughs> Well, I think that's really cool. There's one fun thing about like a true PC gamer is that they usually have a Nintendo system because Nintendo flies in its own lane, right? And there's so many Nintendo fanboys and girls that you could have a PC and enjoy Nintendo games because you can't play Nintendo games on the PC. So it, it's really the only other console that a true PC gamer will buy these days is a Nintendo Switch probably. That's a good combination, right, Stash? Yeah. Like, a PC, gaming PC, and a Nintendo Switch. You can't go wrong with that kind of combo. Um, yeah. yeah. To, to be honest, I got the PS5, and I'm barely playing it. You know, I got... Oh, really? I mean, I'm, I'm, I am played Cyberpunk on it, but I'm still playing... I'm playing Valheim now. Um, oh, yeah. Which I was going to just quickly talk about. Um, do you know much about, about this game, Stash, Valheim? No, no, I don't. So Valheim is this game that just came out. I'm gonna throw up some uh, some footage and and by the way, thanks for sharing your your retro past. You obviously are a gamer, and that will attest to what you do in the crypto space. But Valheim is this game that's in beta stash that came out of nowhere, and it's a Minecraft slash Viking game. 
So it's very much all the mechanics of any Minecraft game where you're crafting, you're building, but you're basically a Viking in this like really cool world. And what's really neat is you have your own server and you could collect materials on your own server and then jump to someone else's server and transfer your stuff with you. So you could be server jumping with your character. Hmm. Uh, really cool game. I recommend checking it out. It's obviously a PC only game right now. Yeah. Um, what's really just neat about it, and I wanted to just bring it up because before we get into stuff, I like to just talk about kind of like a few things I'm doing or playing. I'm really enjoying this game. And if you guys haven't you know, seen it, try it out. It's great. You know what it really looks like? It looks like a game that I played for many years called Shroud of the Avatar. Shroud of the Avatar. Have you ever heard of that game? I have not heard of that game. <laughs> so, yeah, so uh, Let me it looks it a lot like, I mean, but actually, but not as nice looking. <laughs> not not to like hate on, I'm just saying, but like, yeah, definitely not as nice looking. Let me pull that uh, up though. Shroud of the Avatar? Shroud of yeah, the Avatar. So, so Shroud of the Avatar is the spiritual successor to Ultima Online. Uh, created by Richard Garriott, who is a, you know, when you talk, talk about retro gaming, that dude is like the one of the godfathers of, of retro gaming and gaming in general, uh, in particular RPGs, right? If you know Richard Garriott. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, the, 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 you know, Shroud of the Avatar is like that, we'll say, spiritual successor uh, to, uh, you know, to, um, you know, Ultima Online. So it, it's a... Uh, you know, oh, great he's the Ultima guy. He's that guy from Ultima Online is who you're Yeah, Ultima. About. He did the Ultima series, right? And then Ultima Online is the MMO and yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Um, I never, well, I never really got into it's, Ultima. It's Shroud, not Shard. Shroud, oh, shroud. like a, a shroud on your face. Got it. Yes. Shroud of the Avatar. So I was looking at the wrong thing here. Okay. Yeah, you, you were... Here oh, crowded. okay. Now this looks like okay. Now I see. Yeah, it does look like uh, Valheim a little bit. Um, sorry, we were looking at some game that wasn't even the correct game. So now we got the right game here. Um, yeah. So Valheim is pretty much uh, at your own pace, fun adventure game with you could play with your friends and build forts and and bases and whatnot. So so far, I've been really enjoying it. But uh, really interesting. I never heard of this game before. Um, yeah, I, I played this game for like man four years or so plus. Uh, ran one of the largest guilds in the game of like 350 people. Wow. Uh, went to all the events. I've hung out with Richard Garriott. We've had drinks. Uh, you know, I think he owes me a drink actually at this point, but. Right. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's. The, the, what, what you're seeing right now is not even gameplay. This is like the, this is like the map where you travel to different things. I don't know. Here's some gameplay. Find, yeah. Like find a different video. That video sucks. Oh, there you go. See, that's. So this is like actual gameplay. Oh, yeah. It looks a lot like Valheim. Hmm. But yeah, you can do building and crafting and all kinds of stuff. It's very, there's story elements. It's pretty in depth. Nice. But just never, just never picked up a lot of traction. I mean, it has a huge, it has a good, you know, very dedicated, solid fan base of, you know, mostly older players and like that. But, um, hmm. but yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, Stash, uh, I think we should probably get into the meat of it. And before we get into the meat of it, uh, tell us a little bit about the crypto stash and how you've grown in the crypto stash and. Uh, stash i said the crypto uh community uh you obviously grew a, a mustache but give us a little bit of uh just a top line oversight about what you do in the crypto space before we get into like the heavy stuff and the NFT, nfts and yeah. so forth yeah 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 uh so yeah in crypto uh i i just i try and be helpful that's i mean if you want to just really break it down to the most simple thing uh, I create content uh i do you know uh youtubes uh, videos and articles uh, that I write and also, you know, uh, um, you know, helping people, uh, with consulting, but yeah, in general, I, I, you know, people would consider me a content creator. And so I do, uh, I focus on two things uh, within the crypto, you know, entire industry, which are, uh, NFTs and blockchain based gaming. And so uh, those are the two things. And, and those things are, are intermingled obviously because blockchain based games use NFTs, but not every NFT is a gaming element right or is it a gaming you know item so yeah and uh how long have you been doing this i mean you know and just to give context you know i used to do an a podcast called the coin boys podcast with um who's in the chat right now it's virtually a podcast mm -hmm. uh uh daniel gutierrez and um and we did that for quite some time but i think that's where we met just so everyone knows we met in the crypto space in 2017 i would think we were a part and still are a part of the satoshi droppers kind of crypto influencer group which yes. has a bunch of great people like uh crypto wendio and 
Brecky Von Bitcoin and BitBoy. Um, you know, I could go down the list, but there's just a good group of really trustworthy crypto influencers. BitBoy, on the other hand, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I, lo- I love Ben. <laughs> yeah, he's like, well, he's great. <laughs> <laughs> I love Ben. Ben's a great guy. And he's, he's seen some great success. And just before we get even more into like the details of NFTs, have you seen a climb? Do you find that you're getting more viewership based on how the market is doing? Stash, now that you've been in the space for a long time, do you find that that that's been kind of a roller coaster ride that you go on dips and highs even on your own social media platforms and so forth? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, crypto is such a new industry and, you know, people are, are very, um, I wouldn't say timid, but yeah, sometimes they're, they're, it's, it's, it's a little bit, um, you know, uh, daunting to like jump in. And so, uh, it, it's a very, it's a quickly growing industry, but yeah, I definitely, when there's times of hype, you know, especially around when Bitcoin is pumping hard or something is really hyped and there's like, you know, celebrities start talking about it. That's when we always see a spike. And I've seen it every time. And it's very clear, like on my website traffic and things like that too, you know, you can kind of see that uh, very clearly. And so, yeah, I've seen an uptick here since, uh, you know, the beginning of this year, really end of the last year going into this year. Uh, in particular, because I have focused on NFTs since 2017, and I'm one of the very few people who was talking about it and focusing on it since that time, you know, and it's been kind of this bandwagon thing here over the last six months or so. Uh, so, so we, you know, we've seen a lot of people, uh, you know, kind of uh, start to jump on board and, and you know, yeah, uh, want to know more about it. Yeah, so let's get into that a little bit and i want to give you some context that you know back when daniel and i were doing the coin boys podcast we interviewed tons of companies our first interview believe it or not stash was theta token that was our first interview and the fact that i remember the fact that they're still around they're still viable you know organization is really nice to know that a few of the companies that we interviewed in their very early days engine coin um, you know, uh, a wax token, like all these gamified versions of cryptocurrency companies, just really seeing them, you know, come to life now. And that's the thing, you know, let's, let's just take this, like we're talking to someone that doesn't know what an NFT is. What the hell stash is an NFT? If you were talking to someone that had no idea what crypto was, how would yeah. you explain an NFT? So, you know, the, the term NFT, you're right, is not very expla- explanation, uh, explanatory? Ex- yes. Explanatory. explanatory. Yes. Explanatory. <laughs> it doesn't really do a good job of really telling you what it is, even if you know what it stands for, which it, NFT stands for non-fungible token. But that also doesn't really Mr. mean- Mr. Flight said, anything. are you sure it's not non-futuristic toads? It could, it could be. See, the great <laughs> thing about it is it could be non-futuristic toads. Uh, but really, what it just really means, it just means a digital collectible that is backed by the by a blockchain where you can verify the ownership the history and the rarity of that item got it that's it that's it it's and and uh, a way to explain is that and and people have to understand that in order for blockchain technology to work technically what we're doing is these are cryptocurrencies, but we're attaching them to a non-fungible item, a digital item, or something that's not currency-based. Where right, something unique. Unique, yeah. exactly. Currency so, isn't unique. You know, one penny is one penny, man. It doesn't freaking matter. What, you know, they're fungible. That's a fungible token. One Bitcoin is the same as one Bitcoin. They're all fungible. Yeah. But but NFTs are for unique items. So you could have a mint number one, uh, ninja ultra legendary rare you know of uh, pickaxe skin right uh and that that would be you know something that you could prove you could trade it you actually own it right uh and those are some of the cool tenants of of, of you know what an nft is and what it can do um you know just just kind of scratching the surface you know yeah and one thing about gamers and why i always think that gamers resonate cryptocurrency and nfts in particular is because we understand digital goods digital currency right here on twitch and i talked to the i mentioned this to you stash off this but we are literally even though you know twitch bits are not 
cryptocurrency, they are still a digital currency, right? Yeah. So the gamer already has the understanding of the digital sense of owning a digital item. Of so, course. So, oh, Stash, yeah. why is the gaming industry so tied to NFTs now? And why do you think that we're going to see a big success? And we're going to get into some interesting ones that have popped up. But why do you see that, that correlation with NFTs and gaming? Yeah, and I, I see your comment there, Sanity. I'm going to get to that one here in a second, buddy. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, the correlation here is that this is really just the, the, the logical next step and what's already happening right now. You know, uh, well, if you want to go retro, right, uh, back in the day, you just had to buy a damn game. It was 20 bucks or 50 bucks. That's it. That's the only way you could get it. There, there was no other options. They didn't, there was no free to play. That, that, that concept hadn't been invented. Free to play didn't really, you know, kind of come into its yeah. own until the early 2000s even like you know even later maybe you know what i'm saying so so but that changed the entire industry of gaming all the monetization all the ways that that you you want to monetize a game that changed everything right so now people say oh you can come play this game for free that we made and put all this time into uh but you have the option of like you know uh paying for some extras upgrades you know in farmville you're getting you're paying for extra keys and lock shit or you're paying for cosmetics in places like Fortnite. and so they they you know this this funding model or this revenue model has, has shifted and so uh nfts are really unlocking that next level of revenue uh, for not only the developers, but also uh, uh, for the gamers to be able to monetize their time. And we call that hashtag play to earn. And that is the next evolution. And that's what NFTs are allowing to happen here. Play to and earn. So play to you'll, earn. Be able, you'll be able to, not only will you be able to, uh, you know, ha- buy an item from a game store and then you, and then take that item and remove it out of their servers onto your own crypto wallet where you can hold that item which then allows you to trade it in a third-party marketplace that the game has no control over. That's how it works right now in, in all the NFT applications. And that then gives you value over that item. So instead of me buying a $50 skin uh, in Fortnite, which I can't trade, I can't sell, can't take I can't anywhere. do anything with it. If I decide, you know what, I'm done with Fortnite. I don't want to play it anymore. I'm playing Rogue, uh, uh, you know, or, or what is it? Rogue Nation? Not Rogue Nation. What's Rogue, com- Rogue Company. Rogue Company. Rogue company. That's what I was like. Rogue nation, rogue teen. So is it? Yeah, <laughs> rogue company. Right. Uh, what do you do with the with the five thousand dollars with the skins you spent and you have on your account there? Because you you can't sell the account technically through the toss. So you know if, if you if those items were NFTs, then you could then take those items and sell them in you know the marketplace that some other company created uh, that uses the API for. Fortnite, and you could sell your item there for, you know, $500 if you wanted to. And then that person would then have ownership of it and they could resell it again if they wanted to. And then that, then the next person could resell it again too. And then, so, so that, so that's one of the key components. And this is something I talk about every Thursday on my blockchain gaming show called the secret agent stash show. And I, and I have, I have a concept, which I call the Triforce of blockchain gaming. So if you guys watch the show, I talk about it in the beginning of every episode, and I have a sweet little graphic. Yeah, if you pull up the recent one, uh, no, not not that one. You got to go to my channel. Pull up the recent one. So go to uh, YouTube slash Crypto Stash, and then pull up the most recent one that's there, and you and I'll, uh, you guys will see that. Yeah, it's that one right there. And go go about uh, go about like three minutes in. Let's see go if you can three find minutes it. in. There, so say right there. So pause it on that. Uh, oh, right, wow. Right Look there. at that. I like that. So, so, so that, so this, and I talk about it. So, so the, the first part of the Triforce, the top is NFT assets uh, that are owned and tradable outside of the game centralized servers. The second aspect is play to earn, where not only can you buy skins in their store that you can use in the game and then trade, but you can earn those things just by playing. So by playing, you actually earn the items instead of always having to just, you know, pay for them. So playing to earn, not just real money transactions. And, we're, and there's already some really great games that I, I feature every week on my show where you can do that. You're monetizing your time now. But one of the most important pieces of the Triforce of blockchain gaming. I love that. That's so great. Is devs <laughs> profit more. That's the big one. And here is how it happens. If I am Fortnite or I'm Epic, and I decide, okay, we're going to create a brand new skin for, you know, uh, Dr. Disrespect or whatever, right? Right. 
Uh, it takes X amount of hours for our, our designers to do this. And, you know, then we're going to put it in the store. We're going to sell it for 50 bucks. So they, they sell hundreds, thousands of those things, right? Now they've made a ton of money off this skin, but that's where it ends. You're not going to, once you've sold them and they're sold out or that's it, or the promotion's over, you're, that, now that asset you have just had your team spend countless hours on, uh, it had one use and you got one sale out of it and now it's done. Right. But if it was an NFT that could be traded outside of the game servers on a third party marketplace, the creator of that NFT gets residuals on every transaction. Every time that thing is traded, the creator of an NFT is going to get royalties on that NFT. So Epic would, so if I took my 500 skin, uh, $500 skin that I got uh, from Dr. Disrespect and I'm like, I'm done, I'm gonna sell it on this marketplace. Uh, I sold it to some dude who really loves Fortnite and Dr. Disrespect. Uh, so now he's happy because he got it because he couldn't get it before in the sale. Now, uh, now, you know, he paid 500 bucks for it, but the marketplace says, okay, well, but 10% goes back to the original creator of that NFT for every transaction. So on the, so they're getting the 10% of that transaction fee that you have to pay, you know, in a marketplace and every marketplace has transaction fees. This is kind of how it works. Right. So, so you're supporting not only the creator, uh, as well, but you're also supporting, you know, uh, being able to, uh, to, you know, continue to, to give that item use after it may not have a use anymore. And right. so you think about that every time that's traded, it could be traded a thousand times. And then Epic is now collecting uh, percentages of royalties on every one of those trades. Now you've increased the pot, the profit potential on every item you create ever by thousands of percents. That's crazy. Hey, Marta, thanks for stopping by. If that doesn't blow your mind, man. If you're in chat right I, now and you, I'm and blown. Like, you were in, if you're in chat right now <laughs> and you heard what I just said and that didn't blow your mind or you don't understand it, then you don't know jack about gaming. Oh, geez. You're attacking my chat now, Stash. No, I'm just saying. I'm, no, I'm not attacking. I'm just no, saying no. If, if you if that if that concept right there doesn't blow your mind and you were like, I still don't get it. Yeah, I'm probably never going to get it. Marta out. <laughs> says she feels attacked. No, but Marta, it's so nice to see you. Thanks for coming by. <laughs> uh, so Stash, um, what you're saying is this is an opportunity to give the devs their due. This is finally an opportunity to really give the developers a chance to really be a part of the ownership process as well to get yeah, residuals. Yeah, not, I mean, both. It's both sides. It, it's giving not just developers what more of what they want, but also gamers. I'm tired of spending five thousand hours in my favorite game and then end up with nothing to show at the end. Like oh, I'm like, all right, well, yeah, I put all this time in. I mean, yeah, I didn't really, you know, it's just I didn't earn any money or anything. Nothing's. I, I have nothing of value or worth that I can I can then you know extract from this. And so this is going to be part of the new economy that we're moving towards. Uh, in general in gaming, but I think, you know, well beyond that too. Uh, Genzo says, all I heard from that was forced inflation on the secondhand market. Epic would love that. Um, it's crazy that they make so much money on their skins that if they were able to turn their skins into some type of blockchain uh, NFT, they would, those things would like fly off. I mean, actually it would be like top shot, honestly, like skins on Fortnite. Right. Well, and that's be. what I'm saying. So, so, so calling it forced inflation is very misleading Jinzo for sure, man, because what it comes down to is it, it's not, you're not forcing anybody to do anything. It's free market. If, if, uh, if someone, you know, if I put up a skin for 500 bucks and someone's willing to buy that skin because they desire it at some certain level, then who cares? Yeah. But otherwise, that skin is locked into your account. And it's never going to see the light of day. No one's ever going to be able to enjoy it but you. And if you decide to stop enjoying it, then that one skin is now dead forever. So I would, I would rather have, uh, you know, the ability to, to be able to continue to give those things utility and give, and, and give them a good home to a gamer that wants to love them and pet them and call them Do George. you hear the passion in this man's voice, everybody? Do you hear that? He's passionate about this and it's true it's right it's right this is the direction we should be going um stash can you give us some examples of your favorite let's start with blockchain based games um and then we'll get into some more nfts what is from the early days of you starting out is a blockchain game that started about three years ago that's still going strong today or anything anything you could recommend uh so one of my very favorites is uh gods unchained it's a. Uh, it's a, been around a, for OG, I would say, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I started playing Gods Unchained uh, in the beta in 2018. Yes, 2018. 
That's not my video. I have many videos on Gods and Chains. I'm just pulling up a random for me. No, I know. You know the. You know what it is, man. I, YouTube does not like me. I never show up in search results. I think they shadow ban me. To be perfectly honest. Oh no. And I don't know why. Uh, but my stuff does not get good search engine results for whatever reason. But so is Gods uh, Unchained sort of like a Hearthstone kind of yeah a game. Mm -hmm. Now, are these what makes it so unique as a crypto based blockchain game? What is unique about it? What are we What are we seeing here? So, have you ever played Hearthstone? I, of course, of course. Oh yeah. So you don't own those cards. I don't. No, you can't trade them. Nope. No, if you need uh, some specific card for your deck, you're just gonna keep buying packs and buying packs and buying packs. And then what do you do with all these dupes? I don't know. You know, it, what it comes down to is you don't own those cards. You can't trade them. You, and, and, and there's a lot of limitations with that. So in the very basic form, Gods and Chain allows you to actually own these cards on the blockchain. You can trade them. You can buy them. You can sell them. Even if you don't play the game, you can just even speculate on the cards and say, oh, this, this you know, I think these ones are going to increase in value uh, and hold them over a certain amount of time and then resell them in the marketplace later. Uh, but on top of that, they also allow you to play to earn in the game. You can play you can start playing the game for free they give you a set of like you know welcome cards or welcome you know decks that you can you know can start with right and then as you play and and earn and rank up you earn actual packs that you own so you are you're earning these cards as you play the game and you can continue to do that and never put any money into it to be perfectly honest i mean obviously you know you, you have to play a lot to just really get a huge collection of cards but yeah, you earn them pretty consistently at different levels as you rank up. So, you know, that element of being able to earn these cards and then you can fuse them together and then sell them into the marketplace. And so you can actually monetize your time playing this game. Uh, and this is, you know, this, so this is one of the, uh, one of my favorites. And, and there's a couple other really great ones out there that I play pretty regularly on my live stream. I'm pretty sure when you did a charity stream for Stamp to Cancer, you were playing Gods Unchained uh, for your charity event. Is it, am I wrong? Uh, yeah, I think so, yeah. That's awesome. By the way, thank you for, for always uh, supporting Stamp to Cancer uh, and doing some streams. I think you were the first streamer to ever use Theta Token Network <laughs> to do a charity stream for Stamp to Cancer, so. That's true, man, yeah. That, true. I thought that was really cool. Can you give me a, so that's one network I wanted, because we are on Twitch right now. It looks like Theta's down for maintenance, but but um, uh, what is the Theta TV network? I want to get into it just a little bit of what is different about a blockchain-based streaming network, or what? How does Theta Token work? Because I think people sh that that are on Twitch should learn a little bit about Theta. Um, so, so yeah, so uh, so uh, Theta is uh, Theta. Sorry, it, Theta. Yeah, theta. no, no, no. Theta, theta, Theta. Theta. Yeah. So, so, uh, so <laughs> Theta. Yeah. So Theta Network is actually a blockchain-based content delivery network. So a CDN. So if you ever heard of like Cloudflare, that's the big, you know, huge CDN, right? They're a content uh, delivery network. And so that is the basis of their technology. It uses blockchain and a decentralized format to, to serve video, images, whatever it may be in a decentralized manner. And what that means is uh, essentially uh, using um people who are attached to the network's um excess upload speed to you to utilize that in a decentralized manner so if you've ever heard of like a cloud computing where like some of the popular ones are like oh if i leave this little app on uh, uh you know seti can then use a little bit of my computing power to ma make this global network of computing power to like solve their big mathematical problems uh in, in a similar way that's kind of what theta does and but they reward you by using that upload in in tokens right so so you you can earn uh t, what they call t fuel it's it's one of the tokens in the network t fuel is the uh the utility token of theta and so you earn t fuel uh by doing that so you can earn it by uh you know just watching people's streams which is is you know on theta.tv which is one of the ways and as you're watching it's using a small percentage of your upload speed to then distribute that stream to other people watching and so you, if you, when you look at a Theta stream, you'll see they have, uh, there's a little drop down and you can see how many peers you're, you're you know, streaming to or you're pushing data to. And right now, obviously it's a little, you know, the, it's not as big as Twitch, but you know, you, you go on there and you're, you're, you're pushing data to, you know, two, three, four peers and you earn, uh, 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 you know, small amounts of T fuel uh, for doing so. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, and I wanted to bring this up because I did mention it. Uh, you know, they've been around for quite some time. They're leading the way with yeah. with this type of thing. And it's really great to mention. Now, quickly, 
What the hell are Crypto Kitties, Stash? Can you tell these people what the hell these things are, please? Crypto Kitties. <laughs> so, so Crypto Kitties has a a pretty you know uh, historic place in in cryptocurrency and in in if the story of nfts as well so they weren't the first nft project uh by far uh crypto punks was actually the one Which i have you here know, will have claim will have claim to that but crypto kitties are the one that really sparked the idea and 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 it be as a concept and then it really took off from there so really what crypto kitty started out well off was in 2017 right at the beginning of this bull run that we had then uh, uh, they came out with this concept of crypto kitties, and basically what they are is they're 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 pictures of little cute little cats, and they have different uh, genetic traits, right? And you can breed the cats together, so it's like it's a kind of a mini game, and you take one cat that has googly eyes, uh, a dolly mustache, and you know wings and a crown, and you breed it with another one that has you know pink stripes with a, a, a hat, and you know. Uh, uh, I don't know, uh, other traits. And then they, you know, based upon the, the whatever you get uh, ones that have different traits. And so, you know, this whole concept was like, you know, mind blowing to people at that time. And, and it was something new and cool. And it really just blew up. And it was the time, what it really came down was the timing. The timing of the idea was so perfectly timed uh, at a market where things were, people, you know, uh, were, prices were skyrocketing. Ethereum was, was, you know, going through the roof as far as price wise. And, uh, you know, people were latched onto this. And so, you know, they're trading these kitties, they're breeding these kitties and, uh, you know, they all have a rarity, right? So you have like these, the, what were called uh, gen zero or generation zero kitties, which are the rarest, right? There's only a certain amount of those out there. And you know there are, and you can prove there are because it's backed on a blockchain. So you can go see that data and know, oh, if I buy this Gen Zero kitty, uh, then I, I, you know, I know there's only X amount of them out there. That's how rare they are. If I'm buying a Gen 25 that's slow and plotting with, you know, crappy ass, uh, you know, traits, it's not going to be worth a lot, you know. So, so that's that's kind of where this game started and kind of where it is at. You know, yeah, I regret not in 2017. I was like, D you know, I thought it was cool, but I was like, I don't think I want to buy it. And I kind of regret not buying a few kitties back in the day, but that's OK. Um, not going to make myself feel bad about it. But yeah, so crypto kitties are super. It's super interesting to know that they're still stronger than ever um, and that they were. And then crypto punks definitely were something uh, to, to mention as well that people are paying phenomenal amounts of money for these particular items stash. Yeah. And, and um, it's, it still boggles my mind that some of these crypto punks can go upwards of like hundreds of thousands of dollars. Oh yeah. Am I the, right? The floor, the floor on crypto punks right now, I think is around 22 Ethereum. And so Ethereum itself right now is at $1,600. So you guys could do the math on that. Uh, and that I think that's that's the least that you could buy you could buy one for. So this crypto punk, you see what what this is all here, folks. This is a public ledger mm -hmm. of of, uh, everything of, that's of of this particular one in particular. You could see the 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 value. Look how many look at this was purchased for how much money recently offered one hundred and ninety one thousand for this one little image. Yeah, what, like it blows my mind. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean because it has some rare traits, you know, because uh, it's a mohawk, uh, you know, thin. Okay. And you know, there's there's a couple other ones that are really rare on there, like the uh, the ape uh, punks, ape punks, the ones that look like little apes. Those are super rare too. Uh, so the rarity and things like that, that's what really give a lot of these things value uh, in, in in the long term. Uh, Biff Bufflington says, with a non crypto mustache question from Canada, what product do you use for keeping your facial hair in uh, in, in discipline check? Uh, so I actually use a pomade. Uh, I use a pomade called Suavecito. <laughs> so it's not it's not a wax. It's actually a pomade, and it it's like a water dissolvable dissolvable pomade, and it works really great. That's awesome. No, I'm just kidding, man. I, I wake up like this, dude. Come on, <laughs> wake up. I woke up today, ready for the show, ready to go. As we're cornering uh, the back nine of the show, uh, let's quickly talk about some mainstream adoption to NFTs, which is really really helping things. I want to start with Street Fighter. Because yeah. obviously it's video game centric, so we got a we got Wax, which is a very notable NFT. They call themselves the king of NFTs. Mm -hmm. They've been around for quite some time. I've interviewed uh, their CEO personally, William Quigley. 
um, was always fascinated by their work even three years ago and what they wanted to do. And now here they are getting the Capcom license to produce Street Fighter NFTs, which, as you know, Stash, is one of the biggest IPs in the history of video games. So yeah. what are your thoughts on this adoption of developers and publishers coming in from the real gaming space and now taking this serious? You know, yeah, I mean, I, I think that we're really just starting to scratch the surface there, you know, uh, because the, these are our these forays we're seeing like Capcom and Tops, both of which have come on to the Wax blockchain. And yeah, Garbage Pail work. Kids are now digital NFTs. Yeah, yeah Garbage Pail Kids, right. So that's what Tops went with first because they own that IP outright. But you guys know Tops is, you know, the, one of the biggest global producers of collectible cards. And, uh, you know, so, so yeah, so, you know, essentially Wax is licensing these IPs to then, you know, in conjunction with Tops and, and Capcom launch these collectibles. So it's not like Capcom is just like taking it upon themselves and has done it all. And, it, you know, they're in full control in charge of it. No IP licensing works like that. So, you know, uh, but, but in general, I think they've done, a, you know, a, a good job on iterating over the process over and over again. Uh, and, uh, you know, being able to, uh, being able to really, uh, you know, improve it as time goes on. And so what we've seen that from the first sale here that you see of tops uh, all the way through what we'd see now with Street Fighter and things have gotten more interesting and, and more complicated. You know, now with Street Fighter, you have this like whole crafting upgrade system where you buy packs of cards that have like build base cards and you put them together to, to like craft cooler things or higher power things that, you know, essentially have more value in them because you've burned or put more value into them, right, to get them to that level. And and Stash, I've pulled up my actual owned Street Fighter NFTs because I, you know, you know, me as a gamer, I had to get in on this and I you yeah. know, give you credit to helping me uh, learn how to use this uh the atomic hub network and and just to get on get back on track with nfts and um this is my my newest card that i got uh from a new crafting was this ryu battle outfit this is selling for a hundred dollars right now stash and i love mm -hmm. this thing this is yeah. my favorite new card um and it was but, but hold on but tell them why it's selling for so much because what did you have to do to get that card to make that card so we'll tell them. i will i will show you uh actually i could I could actually show you how how much I had to have in order to make this particular build. So literally to make this Ryu card, this is a crafting tree, which is really cool. So I needed to have five of these base class cards. I had to have four mm -hmm. of the foil cards, three of these cards, two of this, and one of the action cards just to get one of these. And that was an easy stash. I had a combination of owning some of the cards and buying on the marketplace. You even helped me. I gave, you know, you, you transferred me some wax when I couldn't get it through the the, the Bittrex network, and I, I paid you for that. So I was able to craft the Ryu, and I'm so happy that I have it. Um, and you you lucky, man, because I don't sell my wax. Right. Oh, well, thank Not you. Not just anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate helping me out. That was so nice of you, man. Um, but this is a good example, and as you see, this is my collection. That These are cards that I literally own, everybody. I own mm -hmm. these cards. And you see down here, this is actually a pack stash that I saved. Now, yeah. just so everyone's clear, when you buy these, you're buying packs. You buy the big pack or the small yeah. pack, like you would buy ripping them open. But just like in the store. Yeah. But tell us a little bit before we just go a little bit more in detail. What are NFT sales and how do they work? Because, for instance, the Street Fighter cards were only on sale for 24 hours. So tell me about the sales around NFTs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, NFT sales all kind of work differently depending on what's going on, what they are, what, what they're doing. You know, and that's why I said with, with uh, all the sales and projects we've seen launch on the Wax blockchain, uh, they've all kind of did it, done it a little bit differently. Uh, some of them have, you know, uh, done it where it's first come, first serve, and then first people to open them get the first, the lowest mint numbers, which is a big thing, you know, mint number is a big thing. Uh, and then also, you know, then with Street Fighter, they, you know, they've iterated and they understand like there's problems with this, things happen. So they did it in a, in a stage thing where they said, okay, well, we're, we're not putting a limit on the number of packs we're going to sell. We're, we're going to put a limit on the time of the sale. So you have three hours. So as many packs that can be sold in three hours, that's how many will be available and out there forever. And then at, at the end of three hours, you'll never, ever be able to buy uh, packs from Capcom ever again. Now you'll be able to buy them in the, in the secondary marketplaces, 
right? In the third party market, like, like, you know, I, you have packs, you, you're selling them. You can still but, buy but, them but in the market. Com, Here's the market. Yeah, you'll never be able to buy them again here on this website, you had the, the Street Fighter website. Right. You can't buy these packs after the 24 hour period until right. series two comes out, Stash, because they're going to come sure, out. And then they, yeah, but that will be a different pack of cards, right? Yeah. So that'll be a series two. They'll have different, you know, designs, different things, stuff like that. So, and that makes sense just like it does with, you know, traditional cards, right? There's lots of different series of of, of, of cards for every style, right? And so I think that's uh, that, that's pretty common. Okay, and, you know, we, we only do, I, I don't want to, I want to make sure I hit all these points. And uh, one important one to talk about real quick, we're talking about mass adoption. And I know this isn't video game related, but how crazy is it that the NBA has licensed off what they're calling top shot digital moments, folks? So their cards but they're literally moments that you own. Stash, can you give us a little bit of a background and story on what these Top Shot cards are and how important they are to the adoption of NFTs right now? Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, NBA Top Shots has definitely been one of the big breakouts. Hey, Doc, uh, good with, to see you, man. With NFTs, you know? Uh, and they they just did a really good job of, of creating something that was cool, uh, that was very tradable, very collectible, and creates that FOMO feeling, you know, but essentially you, you know, these are, these are actual video moments of your favorite NBA players and some of their sweetest, you know, dunks or sweetest steals or, you know, best three pointers. And you now own you those officially licensed moments, right? So if you're a huge LeBron James fan, you can own all of these great LeBron James moments. And, uh, you know, they're going for high, super high dollars right we're, now. We're I mean, looking at one that that's going for about um, well, the lowest of this particular yeah, dunk, sixteen hundred bucks, going for sixteen. That. But if you pull this up, folks, we're seeing other mints of these ninety nine thousand dollars for yeah. this LeBron James dunk. <laughs> so, so, so the the highest valued ones always are going to be the mint number one for any NFT. So, if you collect NFTs or you're like, oh, the, you know, the the first minted of of an asset is always the most desirable. On Top Shots, there's an extra one that's also uh, valuable, and you see it there. It's the jersey number. Yeah, I just so if your noticed mint this. Number, yeah, if your mint number matches the jersey number of the player that you have, that makes it way more valuable. So if you had mint number 23 30, of this card, yeah. it's way more valuable. And you see that in the list. I bet you if you pull that list up there, it'll say, yeah, jersey number. So that's, that's a you know. You know how much this jersey number dunk uh, mint is going for? $232,000, folks. That is a beautiful five-bedroom house somewhere in America, okay? Yeah. This is just a digital moment. So what essentially the Street Fighter, uh, Capcom, NBA, Tops, these are big normal uh brands that people recognize yeah. that are now getting into crypto and just to kind of close out here stash um do you think that nfts are just far more adoptable from a mass market than regular bitcoin and ethereum is it easier for someone that doesn't understand crypto to get into nfts oh 100 percent. everybody understands uh collectibles they, you know, they even understand digital collectibles. Like this is not the first digital collectible. Are you guys kidding no. me? And digital collectibles no have been around for a long ass time. Tops has had a whole digital line of collectibles for a decade, but they're not backed by the blockchain, right? Which means that they're, they're very centralized. Tops controls that. Like if they decide like, Hey, you know, uh, we'll just, yeah, we're just going to sell some more of these packs. Cause why not? Uh, Panda mentioned Diablo yeah. and Diablo three actually had the marketplace. And I remember I was digitally trading goods on, on the Diablo marketplace, you know, and right, right. But you don't actually own those. You don't goods. actually own them. That's no. right. And that's the problem is, it's like, yeah, sure. You can trade digital items in games. That's, that's always been around, but like, but actual ones that you own in some sort of way. Right. Uh, which I think is really cool because outside of, you know, cause with the top digital app that they have, right. Out, outside of that app, those cards can't live. Yeah, they live and die with that specific app. And so when you talk about and someone asked, I think Jinzo asked about this earlier, or somebody asked about it, what happens if the blockchain that it's that all this stuff is on? What happens if that goes away? Well, I'll tell you right now with that much value, like what we're seeing in top shots locked on a blockchain, I can guarantee you that blockchain is never going anywhere. When there are millions and millions of dollars locked into a blockchain like that, I can guarantee you if everybody else decides, hey, we're not ever going to support, you know, I'm not going to uh, run a node for this blockchain. I'll run all the nodes yeah. and get all the monies. Yeah. Um, Genzo, and I'm not the only one. Genzo so, actually had an interesting question for you. Uh, so what happens at the end of life? Like what if this network goes under? The assets that's are- what I just, 
that's what I just explained. Okay, so that that so basically that covers. It would never go long. under. That's it would what I'm never saying. go so, under. So as long as there's there's as long as, long as there's at least one person really, which I don't that was that would never happen. But as long as there's one person that will run a node, or actually actually really you probably need two. As long as there's two people to run, uh, you know, it's two different nodes, you know, you, you'll be fine it, it, to be perfect, and it's not going anywhere. Because why why would you why would you you know sacrifice? a hundred million or a billion dollars worth of, of, of value, it wouldn't make sense. So it's definitely wouldn't go anywhere. And so when you talk about transitioning or upgrades, like all of those things are kind of built into the platform. So things will upgrade. They can, you know, it's not like it's set in stone and, you know, it can't evolve over time. They totally can, you know, and those are some of the tenants that they, that, you know, we've learned from Bitcoin and, and from other cryptocurrencies. That's cool. Uh, uh, let me read off some other things. Uh, it's virtually a podcast set to Genzo. The host is you. It's only on your computer. It's not on a server of a company you bought it from. Uh, right. uh, official Mr. Flight says, um, uh, oh, yeah, there's a drop today at 10 a.m. for Top Shot. But unfortunately, yeah. if you just heard about Top Shot, they lock you out of new signups when they do pack drops. But actually, if you see here today, I'll be joining this particular drop to try to get myself uh, a pack because they Me are too. hard to, to, to get right now. I only have one pack so far. I was lucky enough to get, um, but hopefully I'll get one today. We'll see. There were two other drops uh, yesterday and I was unfortunately not able to get one. Um, that being said, stash where let's let's the final big question is here. Where do you see? I know we talked about that these big companies are coming in to really help push the adoption, but where are we seeing NFTs in the next five to 10 years? I mean, to be perfectly honest, I, I think that, that, you know, this basis and this technology is going to start powering everything that you know, love and interact with on a daily basis. So gaming and collectibles is just like, that's a scratch on the surface. We're talking about uh, legal contracts. We're talking about real estate deeds. We're talking about uh, you know anything that is unique. You can turn into a token like this, and it gives it far better security, uh, track a bit traceability, accountability, uh, transparency, all the things we like. Unless you guys don't like accountability, transparency, and you know, like I guess if you just want people, uh, you know, uh, continue to to do the shady stuff they're doing now. Uh, then maybe that's not something you believe in. But, you know, those are tenants that I believe in personally. And the reason why I'm in crypto, you know, it, yeah. is because, I, you know, it, it's a it's a we're, we're creating a new uh, a new system here, a new paradigm, not I, not trying to fix the old broken one, because that thing is not fixable, man. Anybody who's out there thinking like, oh, yeah, we can totally fix the system. Just do these things. And and it's not true. It's it's totally it's it's broken. And we're not going to fix it. The only way that we move forward is by creating a brand new paradigm. And that's what we're doing here with crypto and in particular with NFTs. Yeah, it's great. I'm so excited. Um, I was just thinking about like the amazing things that you could do. Like one thing that I would love to see Nintendo do is do take the Nintendo Power magazine series and turn those into beautiful digital art NFTs, like where you can collect the original issues of Nintendo Power, but in an NFT. Uh, does anyone from Nintendo... Uh, are you are you in this chat right now? Um, I just gave they're, you a really good. They're idea. all watching, yeah. They, <laughs> they're, they're all watching. Oh, Andy, they're they're all like jotting notes down when I, when I go live, right? They're, yeah, um, there's there's so <laughs> many cool things that you can do. I mean, it's it's limitless. I was just talking about this on another stream yesterday, and you know, uh, one one of the, the things we talked about, it, which was a news article that just came out, is a guy. I think I believe he was in in the UK in England. Uh, he bought an original Banksy artwork. You, you, I'm, I'm sure you're familiar. You have at least heard the name Banksy, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. So he bought a, an original Banksy artwork, and he 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 took a high resolution scan of that artwork. He turned it into an NFT because he owns it. He bought that. It's a one of one. There's no other ones out there like that. He so he took that. He scanned it and turned it into an NFT, and then he took the original and he burned it. Just burned. He lit it, it on fire. <laughs> okay. I like so now it effect. only now it only exists as a, as an as an NFT, and some people think that's that's incredibly crazy, but I can almost guarantee you that the value of that token is going to be is, is going to increase more than the value of that physical piece. Yep. Just because of the the um, hype around him doing it, right? Which I thought was pretty brilliant and very Banksy like. Yeah. Also, which uh, I also thought was pretty brilliant. 
so there's there's so there's so many cool things that you can do and interesting applications and things that you can bring it to i mean like i said it's not limited to gaming uh it's it, any industry i could literally tell you a use case and i could we could put an nft in there and it will and essentially what that would could do and what a lot of blockchain things do is you know it, it increases uh your over your under your overhead or i mean decreases your overhead by we'll say 20 percent if you could use an nft tracking system for your shoes that decreased or i mean increased efficiency by 20 percent and therefore decreased your overhead and you're now saving 25 million dollars per year would you do it as a company? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, and that's what these are doing and that's what they're going to do, this but we're crazy. just barely getting started. Yeah. We're just barely getting started. Where three years ago. I thought we were barely getting started, but we still are. But I think with all these companies coming in, it's really helping. Uh, Genzo wrote a long paragraph here. So what I'm saying is like, you get a signed poster with a certificate of authenticity. I understand that the blockchain is basically a certificate of authenticity, but the company selling the certificate is holding on to the signed poster for you. If that poster is lost, what good is a certificate of authenticity? at that point but you see there's a difference between a tangible item genzo and something on the blockchain you don't have to worry about like filing away your certificate of authenticity you have it automatically yeah. on in one place you can find it um virtually your podcast says no the company is not holding the sign poster genzo your co your computer is the company that yeah, you, you bought you hold it no yeah that, that's the whole point yep. is that no no third party is holding your shit no more man yeah nobody gets to hold your stuff it's not on a centralized server so it's not an epic server that they have on aws it is now residing on ten thousand servers that are distributed across the entire globe and a record of you owning that item is on 10,000 people's computers and they use that that distributed ledger to be able to say yes this is the data we all agree on that data and you can see here it is it's the same on every dang computer that way so if 5,000 go down well 5,000 other ones still know that you own that one at this time with this data and it's all tracked there yep awesome oh man this has been a very 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 um great episode stash um i really glad you came on um, I do want to mention I am going to be going on to a podcast right after this. Uh, I believe you're in chat. It's my boy CNP Panda. Um, I don't know if he's going to be live by the time I was going to raid you after we finish here. Um, but I just want to shout out. Check out CNP Panda's Twitch after this. I'm going to be joining him and talking to him a little bit right after the show. So there's more of me coming. Um, Stash, uh, just give us a little bit uh, – uh, understanding where we can follow you any cool projects coming up that you want to talk about publicly um and and anything to share with us before uh we head out today your, your audience is requesting an encore for one more hour so we got more, we got a lot more to talk about andy no we we could <laughs> we we have a lot to talk about so i'm gonna have you back and maybe uh, uh oh i'm sorry what, what was the question no it's just give us a little bit of your personal you know where where are things going for the crypto stash anything oh, yeah, coming yeah, yeah, up yeah, yeah. Uh, where do we, where are your best places to find you and stuff like that? Yeah. 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 So, uh, the two things I do every week, I do two live streams. Uh, I do one on Tuesday, uh, at 1 PM called the NFT beat. And it's all about NFTs. What's going on, NFT investing tips and tricks, uh, all that jazz. Uh, and that's on Tuesdays. And then on Thursdays, I do a secret agent stash blockchain gaming show. And that's all about blockchain gaming. And it's like a fun, it's like more of a game show, uh, right? So we, we talk a little bit about blockchain game. I try and educate, uh, but I feature a different play to earn game where, you know, I, we talk about the tenants. I, so, I show you how I earn. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I dress as a secret agent that I then get into different disguises and stuff like that. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, one more question and an awesome stash. Uh, and please, I have his all on website. Theta. All on Theta. All on Theta. And uh, can we drop his website again um, where you can just find all of his wonderful stuff, his hub? Uh, Genzo, can you drop down his his um, his his website again? Please check out the crypto stash. And uh, one quick question from 16 Bidden. Sorry, you may have gone over this. Does the art asset only exist on my computer? If my hard drive fails, would I lose no. the asset? No, and so that's what we were saying before is it's, uh, you know, the record of you owning that is on every uh, on every computer that is essentially running a node. A computer is a node for lack of a better, you know, you know, every computer that's 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 has that data will have it there. So it's not it's not just about it only being on your computer. It's not it's not that it lives there. You may not even actually run a node. 
So when we say, oh, it lives on your computer, it doesn't actually live on your computer. That's a horrible way actually of <laughs> describing it. It lives in, in the, the ledger and, 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 and it's connected to your private keys, right? And this is getting a lot more into like the, the, the depths of it. If you guys really want to know the inner workings, the, it, it, you know, I, we, I talk about it all the time. I have all kinds of content. I mean, I've been doing this thing for four or five years now, hundreds of videos, hundreds of articles on my website. Uh, you really can't go dive more into it, but yeah, essentially what it comes down to is that, you know, you have a private, you have a key that helps you un that, uh, essentially unlocks that. And so the record of you owning that is on every node or every computer that runs, you know, that, that blockchain. So. Yeah, no. And if you want to learn more, you know, his series on YouTube, he has a really, he's really good. Stash is probably the one person I would recommend uh, if you're a beginner and you're looking to, oh, I should subscribe to you. How was I not? Oh, this is my other account. That's why. Um, but Stash is literally the guy you want to go to for, you know, beginner learnings or even more in-depth stuff. You have it all, right, Staff? You really give it, really make it easy for people that don't know anything about crypto to really understand it. Yeah. You're also yeah. there for the detailed, more uh, enthusiasts that want to learn a bit more on the detailed side. Um, yeah. But yeah, my, my web, if you're a beginner, my website's a really great place to get started because I have like a start here uh, tab and like that's like the beginner articles. So if you're really like, I don't know anything about crypto, it's a good place to start. There's some good articles in there. But then, yeah, I, I really do focus mostly on the NFT and, and the gaming side. So, yeah. And, and, you know, that's why, you know, this is usually a retro gaming show, but I think it was important to talk about um I'll talk about this because we might see like a lot of retro based NFTs coming out. We might see see that. I know the Street Fighter ones are based on Street Fighter Five, but if they come out with a series that's based on Street Fighter Two collection, oh boy, will those be freaking cool? <laughs> um, that being said, I do have a giveaway. We got a game that we're giving away. Today's game is uh, some random game I've never played before. It's called Valforus. I've never heard of it, but uh, it's yours. We're gonna do a roll in chat this time. We're not doing. Um, we're not going to do stream racer today, unfortunately. Um, but this game looks pretty rad. It's a side scrolling adventure. It's yours. And also on top of this, as you know, if you join the discord and you're new, we do NFT giveaways for the cafe BTW collection today on this particular giveaway. I'm not only giving you the game, going to give you a really cool, uh, a cafe BTW NFT as well. I'll show you a few of them. I'm not sure which one I'm giving out today. But um, and, and I will say that Stash helped me get these all set up and I do have a bunch of collection based. And I think today we're going to be giving out the thumbs up. Oh, you've uh, been busy. The thumbs up. Yeah, I've been busy. We're giving up the, the thumbs up power glove uh, designed by Daniel Napoli, who might be in chat. Um, and we're going to be giving this away with the game Valvarus. If I do the Nightbot giveaway correct, um, uh, all you're going to have to do is put lowercase NFT keyword in chat. Okay. So let me try to make this work. I'm very new at these give automatic giveaways. So, uh, let's see if this works. So here we go. Um, uh, oh yeah. Put NFT in chat, NFT in chat, NFT in chat. Sorry. Uh, that's how you, you join NFT, lowercase NFT in chat, NFT in chat. There you go. If you want to enter to win the game and the NFT, just put lowercase NFT in chat. Come on. I know there's a lot here. You're not only getting an NFT, you're getting a game. A really good one. Get it. Come on. Yeah, there's those NFTs. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Um, I'll give you guys a few more seconds here. Um, I know there's a lot. That, hey, if you're lurking, it's okay. You can win a game too. That's quite all right. All you have to do is put NFT in chat. NFT in chat. Nope, it's virtually a podcast. We're not playing Stream Racer, but you know, maybe next week. <laughs> I expectation for weight race. No. I and love it, I love I love the racer game. It's great. It is a great game. Part. But I don't like I like to mix it up and sometimes we don't always play it, but it's it's one of my favorites. Uh Genzo is making believe he's playing. Uh, mm -hmm. uh okay, we got a few people that are eligible. I know there's a lot more people watching. If you want a chance to win an NFT and also a chance to win Valvarus, which looks like a really cool side scrolling game. Uh, please put NFT in chat. Uh, no, not not NFT in chat, 16-bit <laughs> NFT. Cheeky buggers. All right, I'm going to roll this. If you guys don't want to join, I know you. there's a lot of lurkers. Oh, wait, wait, wait. There's a lot of lurkers. NFT. Oh, Stash entered. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, here we if, go. If I, if I win, if I win, though... I'm going to, I'll give away every, I'll give an NFT away to everybody who put it in chat. Ooh, How about that? 
That's a that's a double that's a double whammy right there. All right, here we go. We're gonna roll it. Biff wins again. Congratulations, Biff. Sorry, you did not win, uh, Stash. So unfortunately, Stash's offer does not count. But Biff, you win another NFT. I'm excited to give you this one, and of course, Valvarus. Biff is on a winning streak, by the way. Congratulations, Biff. Nice. And also, just want to remind everyone that we are going to be raiding CNP Panda. I believe he went live. I'm going to be going on his podcast where he talks a little bit more. Uh, I'm not sure what we're talking about today, but I'm excited. Um, so we're going to raid his channel, and I'm going to pop into his podcast right after this. But Stash, um, as always, man, let's get you back on so we can go a little bit more into detail and maybe even do some pack rips when the new Street Fighter cards come out. That might be fun. Um, so anyway, if you want to check out if you you're gonna get grilled, CNP Panda says, I can't wait, man. I love I love going on to other podcasts that I can be a guest on. But Stash, again, his website's there. Uh, Genzo, can you share the Discord, please? If you're new to the Cafe BTW, join our Discord. We're doing we're doing fun giveaways inside the server. We do we share nostalgia posts, all kinds of fun stuff. I could use the support. Um, and man, we're we've been going strong every Saturday, Stash, for over a year now. Um, and I'm proud of our community. I was banned on Twitter for a horrible music reason, but my community stuck together, and we're still here on Twitch. We ain't going anywhere. Uh, that being said, Stash, you're the man. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Again, check out his website. We're going to raid CNP Panda because that's where I'm going to be going to uh, right now. So let's raid. Say goodbye, Stash. Thank you so Thanks, much. Thanks, everybody. Um, and uh, let's give CNP Panda some love. Uh, in two seconds. All right. Thanks, everyone. Love. Biff, I will send you all the stuff as I always do. We'll see everyone next Saturday. Please join the Discord. Check out my socials at it used to be producer BTW, but now it's love retro BTW on Twitter. Thank you so much. Awesome, dude. That was great.